subject on this video blog. And that was the story came out today uh, by the IMF, and where the IMF is now saying that the China will surpass the U.S. economy to be the world's largest economy by 2016. That's in five years. And that's much sooner than the, the traditional or the conventional wisdom has been by other experts. Now, I wrote an article a couple years ago in which I argued that before the end of this decade, China would overtake the U.S. as the world's largest economy. And now uh, the IMF is pretty much coming to that same conclusion and for the same reason. You see, what other nations, what, what other uh, economists fail to look at or fail to factor in is exchange rates. They've assumed that the RMB and the dollar will stay at the, the same rate that they are today. Well, I believe that sometime over the next several years, you will see a substantial revaluation of the Chinese RMB, where the Chinese currency will rise sharply. And when that happens, that changes the, 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 the way you measure GDP. If the Chinese currency doubles in value against the dollar, then China's GDP doubles against the U.S. GDP. So when you factor in likely exchange rate appreciation, the IMF may well be correct in that China surpasses the U.S. even by 2016, which is even quicker than I thought. I thought, you know, by the end of the decade, but certainly 2016 would meet that time frame. But one thing that I disagreed with, and you can read this article on, on the Internet from the IMF, is one of the reasons that the IMF seems to be attributing to China's success is that America has this a more free market economy and China has a more controlled command economy and because Chinese bureaucrats are making all the right decisions that they're engineering a stronger economy and since America we have free trade and laissez-faire capitalism that's why we're falling behind. Now this is pure propaganda. I mean I've said this many times that America gives ca capitalism a bad name and China gives communism a good name because they're not uh, China is not uh, communist and America is not capitalist. The truth of the matter is the Chinese economy looks more like the American economy than from 100 years ago than the American economy does today. Yes, China is not a democracy. They can't vote. There are certain political freedoms that they don't enjoy. But from an economic perspective, there is less interference and less control in the Chinese economy than there is in the American economy. We don't have a free market. We have anything but a free market. We have the U.S. government distorting every decision that we make. There are all sorts of rules and subsidies and taxes that inhibit the free market from functioning and cause assets and labor and capital to be allocated the way the government wants them to. And in addition, we have all sorts of, of foolish policies that are perpetuated by politicians trying to get reelected. So we do a lot of things in this country that are bad economics, but are good politics. And that is part of the problem that you might want to say, hey, that's one of the benefits of China is since they don't have to worry about constantly getting reelected, they can do what's right and not what's a politically expedient. But the bottom line is we are losing to China because we are not free, because we don't have a capitalist economy. If we did, then this wouldn't be the case. And of course, we also have a government money. We don't have sound money anymore. We have fiat money, we have interest rates that are much too low, that have been distorting, distorting decisions as well as government rules and regulations. So we have anything but a free market economy. And it's because of all the government interference in our economy. That's why we're losing ground. And the reason that the chi China is gaining is because they have less. I'm not saying China is perfect, far from it. They have too much government in China. It's just that they have less than we do. Remember, when the old Soviet Union, a real communist country was around, there was no economic growth in, 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 in the old Soviet Union. They couldn't even feed, they were starving. We had to give them grain credits. That's because they were a communist country in every sense of the word. That's not the case in China. And let's not try to pretend that if we simply had more government and more control, that, that that's, the, that's the way to succeed. No, the opposite. We need to dismantle all the government that we have. We need to go back to the type of economy we had a hundred years ago when we had freer markets, when resources were allocated based on a, a competitive market, based on a profit motive, not based on political whim. They, uh, investments weren't made because there was a, there was a subsidy, uh, because there was a government guarantee, because there was a tax deduction, and Americans were involved in productive employment. We weren't this phony service sector economy where everybody simply uh, borrowed and spent money. Uh, we saved money because we had sound money, because we didn't have a tax code that punished people for spending, and we didn't have this gigantic social welfare state. Remember, we didn't have uh, Social Security, we didn't have a Medicare, Medicaid, and all these government programs 
that we think are so great. China doesn't have any of these programs. And that's why China is succeeding. It's not because they have too much government, but because they, they, they have less than the United States. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm, you know, I'm going to be talking about this tonight on CNN. So maybe you get a chance on the Elliot Spitzer show. If you see this in time, uh, you can watch that uh, on CNN. Anyway, take care now, everybody. Bye-bye.